China's economy is slowing down. What does this mean for China's future? This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. It looks like China's economic miracle may be slowing way down. Even China's official GDP figures confirm the situation is bleak. On Monday, Chinese officials released data for the fourth quarter of 2018. They claimed GDP growth was just 6.4%. That's the lowest reported figure in 28 years. And that's the reported figure. It's been clear for a long time that Chinese GDP data is basically man-made. Chinese current premier Li Keqiang admitted that way back in 2007. He didn't say it publicly, but, you know, WikiLeaks. At any rate, things aren't looking good in China right now. The numbers show exports fell the most in two years last month, with demand in most of its major markets weakening. Imports also saw a shock drop, falling over 7% in their biggest decline since 2016, with Chinese consumers holding back on buying everything from iPhones to cars. Although to be fair, the new iPhone is just a more expensive version of the old iPhone. And who wants to buy a car when Chinese traffic jams look like this? Even I've never seen 30 lanes of stopped traffic before, and I'm from LA. Anyway, across China, factories are cutting prices and laying off workers. Especially factories whose products are directly affected by US tariffs. Foreign direct investment is also taking a beating. Companies are getting more hesitant about doing business in China. That is more because it is becoming increasingly complicated to do business there. With the forced technology transfer, with the lack of transparency, discrimination as compared to Chinese companies, with the massive subsidies of state-owned companies. The big question is, will what happens in China stay in China? Or will the slowdown spill over and become a global problem? Well, the World Bank released its economic report this month and it's called Darkening Skies? It's not a good sign when your economic report sounds like the name of a Darkening new show Skies from the makers says, of Stranger alert. Things. But okay, Darkening Skies says, spoiler alert, that the slowdown in China means more risk of a global slowdown. The good news, at least for America, is since China doesn't import a lot of manufactured goods, the impact on workers in the United States will be pretty limited. But developing countries that export raw materials, like iron ore, could be in for a bumpy ride. The Chinese authorities are already taking action to lessen the potential blow to their own economy. They've slashed the bank reserve requirement ratio. That's the amount of money that banks are required to physically keep. Lowering the ratio frees up more money, which in theory will push banks to lend that money which spurs business growth. The problem with that, though, is that it fuels growth by creating more debt. And China already has $34 trillion of public and private debt. A sort of debt bomb, if you will. In fact, China's debt problem has been called a mountain, a horror movie, a bomb, and a treadmill to hell. Of course, Treadmill to Hell is also the name of ACDC's little-known workout album, which includes such hits as You Shook My Shake Weight All Night Long and Back in Black Yoga Pants. But anyway, so far, Chinese officials' solution to the economic growth problem is to make the debt problem bigger. That doesn't sound great. Well, I suppose they could reduce their debt by creating inflation, but I don't think they want to be like Venezuela, where people have to go shopping with massive piles of bills. Actually, the craziest thing about China's slowing economy isn't ballooning debt, or a manufacturing slowdown, or even risky government stimulus. The craziest thing is that no one quite knows how much China's economy is really slowing down. Yeah, everyone knows China's GDP numbers are inflated, but no one knows how much they're inflated. Maybe the top leadership gets real data from somewhere, but even that is unlikely, since lower level officials are highly incentivized to report better numbers up the chain so they don't get into trouble. And sure, officials can look at other data to make an educated guess, like Li Keqiang looked at electricity consumption, rail cargo volume, and bank lending. But that's not ideal. And if officials don't know how much the economy is slowing, well, 
it makes fixing the problem that much harder. So, what's your proposal to fix China's slowing economy? Leave your comments below. And before we go, it's time to pull out the old hat and answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jordan Larimore asks, China officially has like nine political parties, but they vote in line with the CCP. What are the chances that one day they decide to form an opposition party? Well, Jordan, it's interesting you should mention the political parties. A lot of people think the People's Republic of China is a one-party state, but they'd like you to know that couldn't be further from the truth. China has eight other political parties. A lot of them even have Democratic in their names. If you say it over and over, it must be true, just like the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. There's just one small catch. Those eight political parties are directly controlled by the Communist Party. It's literally written into the Constitution that the multi-party system is officially under the Communist Party's leadership. After all, it's the People's Democratic Dictatorship. These eight other parties combined make up less than 30% of the votes in the National People's Congress. So if they wanted to form a bloc and vote a different way, they couldn't pass any laws. Not because of the lack of votes, though, because the National People's Congress has no real power. Its job is to give the appearance of law to a country where policy is actually decided by the Communist Party. So, if the other parties did try to oppose it, the Communist Party would just declare them illegal organizations and crush them. Not that they ever would try to oppose the Communist Party, since all eight parties are also directly controlled by the Communist Party's United Front organization. So, the chance that these eight parties would one day decide to form an opposition party is zero. There have been people in China who have tried to start real opposition parties that aren't controlled by the Communist Party. Let's just say it hasn't ended well for them. Thanks for your question, Jordan. And thank you to all my fans who contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely mainly on your support to keep China Uncensored going. Go to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.